This is a video I've been meaning to make for a long time because it's really important and I'm going to demonstrate something that you should never do when using resin because firstly it, you're going to waste a lot of resin and secondly it can be a little bit dangerous and thirdly you are going to be so disappointed in it. You never ever do this with resin so please don't try and repeat this in your own homes. The other thing is I'm also going to show you how to do it properly and how to get a brilliant result and how to be really pleased with what it is that you've made. Well, I've got my resin mixed up now, and this bit's the same for whether you're gonna do it properly and safely, or whether you're gonna do it <laughs> without being safe and without doing it properly. And the reason is, I'm gonna put a layer in here first to be able to push my flowers into, cure that up, before I put the deep pour in. You can do this with clear if you want, but I actually quite like it with the white. And I'm going to use a mixture of white mica powder and some white glitter for this. And mix that in until I'm happy that that is all mixed in and nice and sparkly. They hold over a litre each. I think it's about one and a half litres of resin. Because I've mixed quite a lot of powder and resin into these, it will have mixed in some bubbles. So all I'm going to do is leave it for a few minutes and then go over it and get rid of as many bubbles as I can in that background. And this is where I'm going to put my flowers in. I'm going to try and do the same design on each one. And all I'm doing here is putting my flowers in like this where I want them to be. Leaving them to sit here and cure up in that. And that way I'm not going to have any problems with them floating or moving around. And they will be nice and sat in there. Now I have prepared these flowers in the same way that I always prepare my flowers. Now I've finished placing those about and hopefully... I've got them very, very similar because I want it to be an equal fair test to show you why you should never do this. Now I'm going to leave that to cure and then I will show you the next stage. All these roses are absolutely stuck in there and all the flowers are stuck in there and they're not going to go anywhere, which is great. What I'm going to do is work on this one first and this is going to be done with a deep pour resin. And that's gonna be the good one. This is gonna be the one that I'm gonna show you that you should never ever do. Never ever do it. Now because I need quite a lot of resin, I've cleaned out a little bucket here and I'm gonna mix up my deep pour resin. And I'm gonna be using the Tea Expert deep pour because I really, really like it. It is a brilliant deep pour, it works beautifully. It's a crystal clear, it's virtually bubble free, it's non-toxic and it's a two to one mix. It really does make a massive difference if you use the correct resin. I'm doing this one first as well because this is going to take between 36 and 50 hours to cure up and it'll work fine at this depth. I've got my resin measured out now and all I need to do is mix this. And because I've got quite a bit in here, I'll probably mix this for about six minutes. Going round all the edges as well to make sure that I've got nothing sticking on the edges that isn't mixed. And scraping my stick, then going through the bottom as well. You don't need to mix quickly with this. You only need to mix fairly slowly and that way you're not going to introduce any bubbles into it. I want to say a massive thank you to all the people who got me a coffee last month. Thank you so much. Without you people, I couldn't keep living my best life. I'm currently saving because I've got to buy a new resin studio or shed. It's a shed. I call it a studio because I like to try and be posh because I'm having to move. So everything I'm getting now is going to allow me to keep getting my business going. So thank you. And the reason I'm doing this first is to show you how quick you can get things going wrong if you don't use a deep pour. Never, ever not use a deep pour for something like this. Massive thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. Again, you like people who buy me coffee. I couldn't survive without you. And I hope you enjoy all the additional perks of being a member, extra videos, time with me, all the specialists we have in the group and the support that we give. It is the friendliest group on Facebook, I believe. And I'm sure my members would agree to that as well. So the deep pour's all mixed up now and I'm ready to pour it into here. I'm going to pour it fairly slowly because I don't want it to trap too many bubbles if I can help it but it probably will. I'm not putting this in a pressure pot or anything. Well, I haven't got a pressure pot big enough for this mould, so I can't. I am just going to leave it as it is to cure up in the same way as I'm going to the other one as well. 
Now I'm going to leave that to do its thing. I'm not going to mess about with it too much because I don't want to break any of those fragile roses or anything like that while it's releasing the bubbles. So that's all ready now. And what I'm going to do is this one. This one you should never, ever do. And a lot of people do it and then complain to the resin companies or say that the resin's rubbish when it isn't actually the resin. It's because you're doing something you shouldn't do. And what I'm going to be doing is just a normal one-to-one. -one. Now, I love this TA Expert one-to-one -one resin. I really do. And it's perfect for mid pours and it's perfect for shallow pours but for deep pours you are really going to see what i mean and i'm going to mix this up as a one-to-one -one, and then i'll pour it and i'll show you exactly what i mean by this so i've got the one-to-one -one mixed up now and i'm going to do the same as i did with the deep pour i'm just pouring it in trying not to make a mess with it which evidently i can't do just pouring it in nice and slowly this is a thicker resin so it has mixed in quite a lot more bubbles and because there's quite a lot of it as well those bubbles will hopefully come to the top and i will burn them off the same as i would with the deep pour i'm sure a lot of you have already guessed what's going to happen with this but we will have to wait and see you can already see the massive difference in it this one's full of bubbles that one's clear apart from a few bubbles that have come up to the top and a few of the little petals that have got loose first these bubbles off here as well and i'm going to leave that now for about 10 minutes and then i'll come back to it so this has had about five, ten minutes now on. All I'm going to do is go over it again with a long neck lighter and get rid of some of them bubbles. And what I can already feel is this is getting really quite warm already, which worries me. And that is what I want to show you. And you'll see it. I'm going to leave it for about another ten minutes and then we'll come back to it. Well, these have both been sitting here now for about 15 minutes. And what I'm going to do is just quickly take the temperature of this one. And this one's running at 83.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And this one is running at 114.8. So you could already see that this is on its way to flash curing. This one isn't. This is doing exactly what it should be doing. So I'm going to leave it another 5 or 10 minutes. And then we'll come back to it again. Well, this has now had another 5 minutes. So let's have a look at the temperature of this. And this is now showing as red on here and it's 147.2 and that's showing as red. And on this one, we're still running at 84.2, all nicely in the green. Well, it's been 25 minutes now and this is already starting to flash cure in the middle. Look, you can see it's gone quite gelatinous now and i'm going to take its temperature and that's coming out at 175.4 degrees fahrenheit let's do this one just to be sure and that's still only coming out at 85.8 so that one's absolutely fine it can get really really hot and you can kind of burn burn your hand with it if you're not careful and it can also destroy the mold but the other thing is it suspends all those bubbles that are in there look we've got some on the top let's get rid of the ones on the top if we can and then that way we'll be able to see all the ones that are inside and this is why people complain they say oh it's really bubbly you know the resin's not good well it's because of this so never ever do this never use a one-to-one -one resin that's not designed for a deep pour as a deep pour well, this has been 30 minutes now and i'm going to take the temperature of it and it's telling me it's 187.7 degrees fahrenheit and that actually is quite hot to the touch. So that's at nearly 81.8 degrees centigrade, which boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. So we've now gone up to 189.5. Let's check this one. And that's now running at 86.7. So that's fine. That will get a little bit warmer, but it's not going to get anywhere near as hot as this. That's 189.8 now. I can really feel the heat coming off that. Look at all those trap bubbles that are in there. I'm hoping it doesn't get too hot and ruin this mould, but it could do. And it's just coming out as too high now for this. It's not even registering. So that must mean it is very hot. If you get a flash cure, do not touch it just put it in a bucket of water and let it cool down i'm not doing that because i want you to see what actually happens and now i'm just going to leave this overnight let it do its thing and then come back and show you why you should never do this and always do this these are both cured now and this one took just under 48 hours to cure so now it's time to take them out of the mold and thankfully the mold hasn't been destroyed on this one that flash cured but you can really see the difference in the two Look at that. I mean, that is just 
full of bubbles. And actually, I used a very good quality resin for this. If I hadn't have done, I think it would have flash cured even more and possibly distorted even more. But remember, it got very, very hot, almost to the temperature of boiling water. You've got some distortion here, but who would want that? If you did someone's bouquet from their wedding or things like that, could you imagine how disappointed they would be if their final product ended up like that? Where this one, using the deep cure, has come out beautiful, lovely and clear throughout. Virtually no bubbles in it at all. Cured up beautifully, didn't distort or damage the actual roses themselves. And overall would look like a beautiful ornament for someone to treasure forever with their bouquet in. I can't emphasise enough how important it is when you're using resin to ensure that you're using the right resin for the right job. So never ever try to do a deep pour with something like this using a non-deep pour resin and the tea expert deep pour resin is one that i know and feel confident in pouring to that depth and there's very few deep pour resins out there that you could pour to that depth and we're talking here because i did put a base down don't forget three and a half centimeters which is nearly one and a half inches and i would confidently do that every single day of the week i hope you've enjoyed this video and found it really useful because i just want to save you money and i just want to save you disasters boop that like button hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out the video that i've got coming up next on how to make money using resin take care enjoy your resin bye